when you realize how complex the world is, how complex all the phenomena are, how everything is synchronized in an amazing way for us to be here to have this talk together, then you realize that all this requires a creator. The deeper I look into science and scientific points, the more I see the hand of God. When we see complexity, organization, like David Dormido used to say, plan and purpose, then it absolutely requires to be a creator. Would you be able to share something specific with us? Let's take an example really, really simple. A seed. A seed has, on one side, there is the root that comes out. On the other side, you have the trunk that comes out. Now, as far as I know, the farmers, when they plant the seeds, they don't pay attention to put them in the right orientation. They put the seeds on a random way. And when you look at how the seed behaves, the first thing he does is to put the root going down. How did the seed know about this? Imagine being the seed. You have a GPS, you have ways that tells you where, where down is. You are surrounded with earth, but the seed knows that if he has been put upside down, the root will do a U-turn to go down and the trunk also will do a U-turn to go up. That's one of the things we should marvel about and you can see from those images, uh, time-lapse images that, that you see exactly this depending on the orientation of the seed. You always see the root going down and the trunk going up. And then, what is the seed? I see the seed as the combination of three things. A supercomputer, an encyclopedic database, a humongous database, and a chemical factory. So let's understand this. So the seed is there. The program says, now put the root down, draw the root. So it starts drawing the root. Once the root is going down, it says, try to grow the branches of those roots. So to get more of a grip into the earth. Once it has some of the grip, it says, okay, now it's time to grow the trunk. So it starts growing the trunk. And of course, the materials of the root and the materials of the trunk are not necessarily the same. So the chemical factory has to say, okay, now supply some molecules for the root and now different molecules for the trunk. And the trunk starts growing up. And you can see how strong the force is for uh, lifting the earth and get out of the earth for this trunk. And this trunk starts growing up and starts growing also in size. And eventually from green, it becomes more wood, which is a different material. So there should be the chemical factory somehow has to supply all these materials. At some point, the program of the supercomputer says, hey, hold on a second, now we have to start growing branches. So it needs to decide where to grow branches. And branches is not an easy thing because the purpose at the end is that all the leaves of the tree will maximize this, their exposure to sun. So the calculation of where the branches should be and the secondary branches and so on should be and where the leaves should grow is not easy. It should be a program that optimizes, maximizes the sun exposure. So now you have the program says, okay, grow the trunk, and then new program comes in, grow the branches. Third program comes in, grow the side branches, so the branches on the branches. And eventually it says, okay, now grow the leaves. Hold on a second. The leaves are green, the wood is brown, and they're different material. In fact, the leaves is a very complex system where you know about photosynthesis, one of the most e efficient uh, chemical conversions that, that convert basically to sun and uh, produce oxygen and uh, carbon dioxide at night. And all the leaves should be positioned in a way that they don't obstruct the sun from the other leaf. So you need to maximize sun exposure. The seed was not green. The earth is not green. Water is not green. Air, oxygen is not green. Where is the green coming from? So somehow in there, there should be a production of something that is green. And then the program continues, a new program kicks in and says, now we need to grow the flowers. So hold on, flower. So now the flowers, some are white, some are yellow, some are pink. Where are those colors coming from? Same discussion as before. And then once the flower grows at some point, a new program kicks in and says, now fruit, we want the fruit in there. So you start deciding, you first decide, where are you going to grow the fruit on the tree? And again, you have to make sure that the fruits are not kind of colliding one with, with, with each other. So they should be in specific positions to maximize the dispersion of those fruits on the, on the branches. And when the fruit grows, there's something I want you to think that is absolutely fascinating to me, is let's say an orange. An orange is kind of a round fruit. A, when you have a round, let's say a sphere, you have a volume and you know the volume goes with the cube of the radius. And the surface, the, the, the peel goes with the square of the radius. So one goes with the cube, one goes with the, with the square. 
from the same stem that gives the nourishment for the, the orange to grow, it needs to calculate exactly how much to put inside and how much to put outside. And there are different rates. One is a cube of the radius, one is a square of the radius. So everything should be calculated precisely. If it's not calculated precisely, either you have a peel that is flopping, flapping around outside, or you have a peel that breaks because it stretches too much because the inside grows too fast. So the two growth should be synchronized. It's a fascinating problem. And then the orange is green at the beginning. What is this green? Green to confuse with the leaves. It kind of sends you the message, hold on a second, don't pick me up yet. I'm not ready, I'm not tasty yet. At maturity, it changes color. It changes color, becomes orange. From green to orange means there is a chemical uh, development here that, that happens to change the color, right? And when it's orange, it's kind of saying, hey, come, pick me up, I'm ready, eat me up. And then you see that the peel is amazing. The peel protects from the rain, from the elements. It has even antibacterial properties. It kind of repels the insects. And it has even a, a nice smell when you squeeze the orange peel. You can smell that, that nice thing. And when you orange, open the peel, you see that inside it's white. Hold on a second, why, why is it white? Because you don't need the color when, once you open it. You know you are gonna eat it. Another thing that's interesting is the stem itself. The stem is very, very strong and it supports the fruit. At some point, when it gets to maturity, the stem kind of becomes weak in a way that it becomes so weak that eventually the fruit can fall down and we can pick it up. Synchronized exactly. So when you think about it, it's amazing. You have here a supercomputer, a, a huge database of information with this program that needs to know when to grow the, the, the roots, the trunk, the branches, the secondary branches, the leaves, the flowers, the, the fruits, synchronized with the, all this with the chemical factory that has to deliver different molecules for the, for the root, for the trunk, for the leaves, for the flower, for the inside of the orange, for the outside of the orange. And all this is in there, in that seed.